I'm here with Wayne Walker. How are you? Who Pretty teaches good. HVAC here at Rosedale? Yeah. What can you teach me about HVAC? Well, today we're talking about compressors. We're actually just going over a review of the, uh, some of the information we've looked at in our book, and we're talking about all types of different types of compressors out in the systems. There's reciprocating and scroll compressors and rotary compressors and similar to automotive. Yeah, a lot of the <coughs> same sort of uh, compressors that. A lot of what we deal with is hermetic compressors, which are entirely sealed, where you'd have an open compressor in an automotive mm -hmm. section that would be independently driven. So, um, Like, oh, well, we use the engine's power to, to turn them, but you use more, like, say, electric motors, things like that? Exactly. Yeah. And, then, and the different types of systems. I mean, do you cover things like geothermal and stuff like that also? Actually, we, we just, just talked about that today. Yeah, we were actually... It uh, seems to be pretty hot right now. You know, it's, it's incredibly Not to sound too punny. <laughs> yeah. It's really That's really hot, hot right now. <laughs> That's right. No, the idea is that we can uh, use a geothermal application heat pump in a very extreme uh, climate situation. You know, we can work in... A, Antarctica? Sure. Yeah. The, still the There's still heat still in the ground. Still, absolutely. It's just a little further down, but it's still there. But, uh, <laughs> you have to dig deeper holes under the ice and stuff. Yeah. It'll work. But uh, we, we were just looking over the applications and... Uh, in my experience, I've installed a few geothermal systems, and I was telling the guys how we use old water wells that um, when they drilled the wells, they were actually dry. Mm -hmm. So we found a use for them, and we use those to be our ge geothermal loops where we put our uh, refrigeration tubing in in order to create our uh, heat exchanger or conductor for the outdoor system. Save some serious labor, I would think, well, having to drill that hole. Not having to drill the holes was great, but it's also a great efficiency step because we drilled through solid granite, so they're a great heat exchanger. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. So what else can you tell me about HVAC that's new and exciting? What's, what's, what's coming into the world of HVAC? Uh, what's really exciting is uh, other types of heat pumps, which are uh, DC compressor-driven motors, and they're used in Mitsubishi, Fujitsu, and Sanyo, and I'm sure I'm missing a few, but they're all... Uh, basically remote head condenser and evaporator situations where each room has its own evaporator, airflow system, and thermostat. So, so it's it, like right inside the vent or something like that? Yeah, well basically you'd have a, on the wall you'd have a evaporator that will have a single source fan and thermostat that for each room it has its own zone. Each one of those heads are connected to one compressor and uh, they've got the technology to, to drive the compressor slower and faster uh, with DC uh, power. Interesting. That sounds very European because from what I've seen of, of their dwellings, they, they have like separate things in each room for whatever it is they do. They're really into efficiency, things like that. Yeah. I guess it's because I, the raw materials and things cost more there. I'm, I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. I think they're just ahead of the curve in technology. All that stuff that we're talking about is coming from there. And okay. uh, they, they use a ton of the uh, Mitsubishi split systems and Sanyo and all these things in Japan, of course, because that's where they build them, but all sell over in Europe and Germany. And it's it's very efficient, there's no duct work, so therefore there's no duct losses, and uh, a lot of the spaces are more used, say more cut off. They're, they use only one room at a time, or even if there's multiple rooms, they're individually controlled, so it's better climate control and uh, it's more efficient. Just as per use, instead of trying to you know, heat or cool an entire dwelling, you could just do that specific room yeah, exactly. that you're in, rather than worrying about the whole house. Like you're sleeping, you're not in the living room, so why? Mm -hmm. Why have it on in there? Yeah. So how do you bring these guys into all this? Well, we're bringing them in from the beginning. We started out with, uh, this is our basic refrigeration class, and mm -hmm. what these guys are learning is from the basics to how this function works to uh, the applications that are involved with the basic refrigeration cycle, uh, from the compressor to the condensers to the expansion devices or metering devices to the complete process, how they work, and we're bringing them in from, from nothing to uh, complete... Um, understanding of how this stuff works so we're about six weeks into it now so what do you guys think so far learned a lot yeah learned a lot well, i've been sleeping the whole time <laughs> <laughs> i just woke up I <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah it's been pretty neat learning you know, i come from a lot of background i never really had a full understanding of the refrigeration cycles in the cars i knew how they worked but i didn't know how they actually worked or how they were achieving the work mm -hmm. you know and just in these first couple of weeks I know way more about them than my years of dealing with them you know I have a much better understanding of, of the systems and how they work so he's getting something from you yeah absolutely You're doing your job it's man it's working Wayne Walker thank you very much it's a pleasure to meet you take care